fears that they might have had for their personal safety to get to the root of the problem and to take care of it as quickly as they possibly could. At least that's from the initial reports from the police department. Yeah, and, and certainly the timing, John, does kind of point to that, and that kind of narrow window of time it does, does go to demonstrate that they were quite, uh, quite uh, deliberate and intentional on what they had to do. Uh, perhaps we'd be looking further and saying, what is that training that's involved? Uh, what was the command and control that put that in place? Or did these officers just know intuitively this is what they needed to do? Um, and it also goes to point out the fact that, you know, uh, training, I think it was mentioned earlier perhaps by the, the former chief in Boston, is that, you know, training in the school is very important as well. So as much as we would like to kind of eliminate these incidents from ever happening, um, but certainly we like to reduce them down to where there are very, very few. But nonetheless, you still need to have that training, whether it's for police response, whether it's for students and teachers, you know, in, in the schools. And again, you know, it goes back to this question of, of, you know, who's immune? Well, no one, unfortunately, is immune. And as we see from this, this school where it is and the other ones you mentioned before, John, you know, there's a, a kind of a, a plethora of, of different circumstances, but they all kind of evolve around the same situation where people, someone got into the school with a weapon. How they got the weapons, that investigation needs to go forward. Uh, how they got into the school uh, is very important to me because it's that last tripwire, that last line of defense that we need to look at when we start looking at schools and, you know, whether it's attached to a, a church, whether it happens to be a standalone, you know, in a rural area, happens to be a